Hey guys, uh, so today's class obviously is uh, online. I'm not feeling so well and I'm hanging out at home. Um, so if you hear, uh, <laughs> I'm hanging out with my, my dogs and cats, so if you hear some pet noise in the background, that's just the old pets hanging out, learning math with the rest of us. So uh, we're going to go over chapter 8.2 today. Uh, this is all about um, simplifying square roots, a little more simplifying square roots. Remember in 8.1 we learned about roots and radicals, um, you know, just had the basics of square roots and things like that. <laughs> Sorry if I'm a little bit behind today. Um, so <clears throat> anyway, let's go ahead and start this off. This shouldn't be too long of a lecture. Um, you know, make sure that you pay attention though, because that exam's coming right up. And this kind of stuff, it's pretty easy to learn if you just practice a little bit. Uh, more so than even the last chapters, this stuff is, you know, it's it's not too bad. It, it just takes a little bit of repetition for this stuff to sink in. So the first thing we're going to go over is the product rule. The product rule for square roots. And this is something you can put on your note card if you're if you're making your note card for the next exam. Uh, the product rule for square roots basically says that we can multiply two square roots together and they turn into one square root, right? And so if we multiply root A and root B, it is the square root of A times B. This also works in reverse just so that we are aware of it, right? So we can also go from A times B to, sorry, the square root of a times b to the square root of a times the square root of b. So we can either, we can uh, do this as well. So we can say like square root of 15, split that up into the square root of 3 times the square root of 5, right? So we can go that direction. So anyway, let's try some of this out. So on this first example, you can see we have the root of 5 times the root of 7. We can extend the square root over both of those terms, giving us the square root of 35. Okay, square root of 6 times the square root of 6, that's equal to the square root of 6 squared, which as we know is just equal to 6. All right, um, even when we have fractions, that doesn't change things, right? We just extend the square root over both fractions and multiply those. So I have two-thirds times seven-fifths. Right? Remember how we multiply fractions straight across the top, straight across the bottom. This gives me 14 over 15. Okay, I can't simplify that anymore, so I move on. Let's keep going with this. Um, so I have 2x, sorry, the square root of 2x times the square root of 3y. Uh, that, remember, I just extend the square root over both. So I have the square root of 2 times 3 times xy. So that's the point of those examples. We just extend the square root over both. Okay, and we do that because sometimes uh, it's easier to simplify that way. <clears throat> so let's talk about simplifying and factoring. Um, so in the last little, uh, on the last page, I went over how we take two square roots and turn them into one. Well, I also went over how we do the reverse of that. And so that's kind of what we're going to go over in this section. So remember, if we have the square root of some a times b, we can split that up into the square root of a times the square root of b. And that's that's one of the main things that we use when we're simplifying. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so that's one of the main things that we use when we're simplifying uh, roots and radicals. So take a look at this next example where I have observed right here. So I start out with the number 50. And suppose I'm asked to simplify this. Well, I can split 50 into 25 times 2. I notice that 25 is a perfect square. That's, that's the reason why I chose that factor. On the next step, I split off the root 25 to be all by itself. And finally, on the last step, I convert that root 25 to what it's equal to, which is just plain old 5. The root 2, 
that just stays there because that doesn't simplify anymore. It's irrational. All right, so just remember the reason why I split 50 up into 25 and 2, right? 50 splits up into different things. I could have split 50 up into 10 and 5, but that wouldn't, that wouldn't have done me any good because neither of those are perfect squares. Since 25 is a perfect square, that's what actually does me the good here. And that's the reason why I was able to simplify in this last step. I uh, just think if I would have done this a slightly different way, right? Maybe I would have said root 50 is equal to um, 10 times 5. Well, that's definitely true. But when I split up my square roots, there's no, there's no simplified answer to either of these. And so I don't simplify the whole thing at all, right? So the point of that is when you split your, uh, when you split your initial number up, look for a perfect square that, can, that that can split into. If the number doesn't contain any perfect squares, then you can't simplify it. There you go. <laughs> Okay, so the simplified form of a square root. A radical expression for a square root is simplified when its radicand, meaning the part underneath the square root, has no factor other than one that is a perfect square. Okay, so let's start simplifying these things and see what happens here. Uh, so when I think of 18 on this first example, does it contain a perfect square? Suppose, suppose it, suppose I wasn't sure, right? Some, some of you might be sitting there right now thinking, well, it does, I know what it is, but suppose I wasn't sure. Let's go over how to find that. So if you're absolutely not sure, right, it's best to just kind of see where the perfect squares are, maybe memorize those and just be able to see them. But if you can't, create a factor tree. With this factor tree, you just go ahead and you, you go all the way down to its prime factors, right? 18 splits up into um, 6 and 3. 6 splits up into 2 and 3. And 3 is prime, so it just drops straight down. Now that I have my list of prime factors, I can circle the pairs. Right? Whatever pairs I have left, those are the perfect squares contained. Right, and so 18, it's equal to 3 times 3 times 2, which is 9 times 2, and 9 is a perfect square. So that's how you find the perfect squares if you don't know uh, if they're contained in there or not. You do a factor tree, you work it all the way to the bottom, and then you circle the number of pairs. Multiply all those pairs together, and you have it. <clears throat> okay, so... Suppose, and maybe we should go on a little tangent just so you guys, um, just so that we know uh, how to do this. Let's see now. Um, suppose we had uh, the square root of 32, right? And we just, we weren't, sh we, we're not sure uh, if this contains a perfect square or not, but we're, we're being asked to simplify this. Well, I'd have to do a factor tree. 32. 32 is equal to 16 times 2. See, and maybe this is, a, this is actually a bad example, but we're going to do this anyway. <laughs> um, <clears throat> 16 times 2. Uh, 16 is equal to 8 times 2. 8 is equal to 2 times 4. My twos continue to drop straight down. Yeah, this is maybe a bad example, but that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna try this out anyway. My twos continue to drop straight down. Okay, so 32 is made of all twos. So now I circle the pairs. I have a pair of twos and a pair of twos. I don't circle that last two because there's no pair. Um, so even if these were pairs of different numbers, this would work the same way. So I multiply all of these together. Right? I have two, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 4th, that gives me 16, and that's times 2. This one will always be a perfect square because of the way that we made it. We made it from pairs of numbers. So 16 would be my perfect square in this 32 example. So I'd say, well, this is 32 is equal to the root of 16 
times 2, which is equal to the root of 16 times the root of 2. And the root of 16, we can simplify this, turns into 4. So I just have 4 times the root of 2. Okay, <laughs> so that was a bit of a tangent. We were supposed to be doing a different problem. <laughs> Uh, so remember, initially, we were working on the square root of 18. And we found through our little process that the perfect square contained in 18 is 9. So that's the factor that we split this up into. 18 is equal to 9 times 2, which is equal to the square root of 9 times the square root of 2, which is equal to 3 roots 2. And that's typically the way that we say that. We say 3 roots 2, or 5 roots 2, or you might say um, 4 roots 5. Right? That's, that's an easy way to say that. You can also call it 4 times the square root of 5. That, that's also totally fine. So let's go on to the next example. Now that I've blabbed your ears off about that one. So the next example, um, we're actually using some variables. We just have to recognize uh, the way that this whole simplification things work in order, to, in order to be able to simplify the square roots with variables in them. So with this one, let's just recognize that we have a perfect square right here. It's a squared. So I can split up this square root so that I have the square root of a squared and the square root of b this one I can simplify a times the square root of b and that's it no problem All right I'm only able to do that because I have sort of the the fundamental rule of square roots sort of right the square root of anything squared is just itself and that's the same thing that I did up here Right up here, I could have rewritten this if I wanted to. Could have rewritten this as square root of three squared times root two. Right, and notice how the three is what popped right out, just like the a popped out down here. All right, so let's keep going. This one's a little gnarlier. We have a hundred and ninety-six t squared. Hmm, one ninety-six. Um, I'm not sure if that has an even square root. Let's, let's try that out. So 196, where's my square root button? 14, hey, nice. 196 has an even square root. So I don't have to do all the factor trees and all that. Happy day. So <clears throat> what I usually do here is I, I like to split these things up so that um, before I start working on it, I split it up so that I have only the number underneath the square root. And then I leave the variables kind of by themselves in their own square roots. All right, so I've split up, um, I split up this big, big term into separate square roots. So we already know that 196, the square root of 196 is just 14. So I have 14 squared. I have the square root of 14 squared here times square root of t squared times root u. All right, now that I have everything uh, in an easy, easily simplifiable form, I just pull everything out of the square roots that I can. All right, whoops, that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> Hold on. It's still supposed to be a 14 down here. So what comes out? is what's squared under the radicand, right? So I have 14 times t times root u. Notice how the square roots are gone now on these two that I simplified. It's a common mistake to sort of leave the square roots there for some reason. We don't want to do that. The square roots stayed on the u because I wasn't allowed to simplify that at all. That's the only reason why that's still there. So let's move on to this next one. Uh, this is just an evaluation example. Um, and you guys have actually seen this one before. Remember, this is, um, this is a quick way to tell if a polynomial is even factorable. 
Um, remember our polynomials come in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, right? And so these values they give us, and this is extra, you wouldn't have to do this for an evaluation problem. I'm just showing you guys where this comes from. So these numbers they give us come from a specific polynomial. That polynomial is 3x squared plus 6x minus 5. And basically, this is called the discriminant. Remember, this is all tangent stuff. You don't have to remember this. This would be called the discriminant. You'll, you'll learn this next year, actually. <clears throat> now, if the discriminant is an imaginary number, in other words, if the number underneath the square root is negative, this polynomial has no real factors. So if you're on an exam and you have some polynomial that, that you're trying to guess and check and you're just not sure if it even has factors, you could enter its numbers into the discriminant and find out. So let's go ahead and enter the numbers from this polynomial into the discriminant and see if it has any real solutions. In a test or homework situation though, remember, you'd probably just plug this stuff in and play. You wouldn't need to understand any of this. So I have the square root of b squared. If b is equal to six, that is six squared, minus four times a times c. a is three c is negative 5. So this equals the square root of 6 squared, which is 36, uh, minus, and actually that's a plus because I have two negatives here, plus 4 times 3 times 5, 60. Okay. On the next step, I just add these things together, and I have the root of 96. So since that's a positive square root, right, that's a real number, I know that this it's possible to factor this polynomial in some way. But that wasn't really the problem. That was just kind of a, a side tangent. So, so let's go ahead and simplify this thing as much as possible. And it, it does only say evaluate. Um, so I could probably punch this into a calculator and get a decimal approximation for it. But we're simplifying these things right now. So, so let's just do that. So let's make sure 96 is not a perfect square. Oops, I lost my calculator. So anyway, let's just make sure 96 is not a perfect square. So what's the square root of 96? It's some big ugly number. Um, so let's, ah, 96 is divisible by four though. So let's just start our factor tree and see if there's any perfect squares contained in here. It's divisible by four, so we know that there's at least one. But let's see if there is something larger. So I have my 96, which is four times 24. Uh, my four turns into two times two. My 24 turns into four times six. The twos are prime, so those continue to drop down. The 4 turns into 2 times 2, and the 6 turns into 2 times 3. Okay, so now I circle my pairs. 1, 2. I have two pairs of 2. So I multiply all that together that I've just circled. I, that gives me 8. No, that doesn't give me 8. That gives me 16. So 16 will be the perfect square that I pull out. The stuff that will stay underneath the square root is going to be whatever I had left, 2 times 3. Okay, so 96 turns into 16, root 16, times root 6. See how that worked? That's the factor I split off, and that's what will be simplified. So on this next step, the square root of 16 is just equal to 4, and the root 6 cannot be simplified. So that's it, 4 root 6 for this one. <clears throat> okay, let's keep going here. So, 
We've seen a little bit on how to uh, simplify the square roots of, um, of variables. Uh, now we're going to go over how to simplify square roots of variables with kind of higher powers. We know how to simplify a square root of, let's say, the square root of y squared. Right? That's just the absolute value of y. Or, how we usually do, it's just equal to y. I, if I had mentioned that y was just a positive. But for the most part, we don't do that too much uh, until maybe next semester or so. We just consider this y. Um, but now what happens if it's y to the 10th, right? How do we do that? Well, what we need to do when we have um, something to a higher power is rewrite this. We need to split off enough factors to make this rewritable in a convenient way. When it's an even number, right, when the exponent is an even number, this is sort of the easier case. We just rewrite this in terms of squares. So I can rewrite this as, this is a little bit weird, x to the fifth squared. Right? And so now, now I have the square root of something squared that something is x to the fifth, and so that is what pops out. Right, and that's how you do it every single time you have an even numbered exponent. Right, you just cut that in half, you write it in terms of squares, and that allows you to pop that out the other half. But it'll always be just one half of the exponent. Okay, if you had like, um, you know, if you had the square root of x to the, let's say, 22nd, you would rewrite this as x to the 11th squared. And the only thing you'd pull out is that x to the 11th, right? Because the square root of something squared is just that thing, x to the 11th. Okay, notice on this last step, the square root is gone. All right, so that's how you do that for an even power. Let's check out how you do this for an odd power. It's not that much more complicated. It just takes one, one extra step. So the first thing we do is we rewrite this so it's in terms of an even power and, and maybe an odd extra power. So I rewrite this as the square root of x to the 10th times the square root of x. And that way I get my even power that I can simplify now. Now that I've split off that one odd power, I just simplify the even power just like I did in the last example. So I rewrite this as x to the fifth squared times root x. This one I can simplify, so I'm gonna do that. x to the fifth just pops straight out and my root x just stays the same. So that's it, that's how you handle an odd power, right? You just split one off and then simplify the even power. So if I had another odd power, let's say I had x to the uh, 31, this would equal the square root of x to the 30 times the square root of x then I'd rewrite this one with the even power and I'd leave the single x alone because there's no, nothing else I can do with that. So I'd rewrite the even power into x to the 15th power squared times the other x that's just hanging out. I'm able to simplify this first one because I have it in terms of squares. So the x to the 15 pops out and I just have plain old x under my square root remaining. <clears throat> so that's that. Take a look and memorize this stuff. This one's easy to memorize. There's no reason why you shouldn't have this, this particular operation just memorized after this lecture or after this homework assignment, right? This is not, t not difficult stuff to memorize, okay? It's gonna save you a lot of time if you just have this memorized later. So let's do some examples. So this first one, I have an even power. It's x to the sixth. I know what to do there. 
I just rewrite it in terms of squares. So this turns, in, turns into the square root of x to the third squared. And remember, this is the part that, that jumps out of the other side, x cubed. Okay, on the next one, I see I have an even power. So this just breaks up. I have to rewrite it in terms of squares. So I have p to the sixth squared. What pops out is p to the sixth. Right? And 6 is exactly half of 12. On our last example, notice that 3 was exactly half of 6. That's what happens when you have an even power. It just splits in half. Okay, z to the 22. We rewrite that as z to the 11 squared. And z to the 11 is what comes out on the other side. Okay. Um, so let's keep going here. Now I have an odd power. Remember, with the odd powers, we're supposed to split one off and then simplify the even power. So I rewrite this as x to the 8th times plain old x x to the 8th can be rewritten as x to the 4th squared times plain old x. And then this x to the 4th is what comes out on the other side. x to the 4th, and I can't simplify this other x, so that just stays there, root x. Now I have 32p to the 19th power. So since I'm dealing with both numbers and variables, I'm gonna break this up on the first step so I don't confuse myself. I have root 32 times root P19. 32, let's see now. We already did this in a previous problem. We know that 32 splits up into 16 times two. And we also know that 16 is a perfect square. So that's the factor that we should definitely split 32 up into. All right, so 32 splits up into root 16 times root two. All right, we need to do the same thing to p to the 19th power. We need to split that up. We need to split that up into two um, different versions, right? We need to split it up into the square root of p to the 18th, right? The next even number down times root p. Square root of 16, that simplifies into 4. Root 2 just stays there. p to the 18. Remember, that simplifies into p to the 9th, which is 1 half of p to the 18, and then the root p just stays there. So then I definitely want to rewrite this because it looks pretty odd right now. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4p to the 9th times the root of 2p. Notice how I recombined these guys underneath the square root in the end. If you can't simplify them, you might as well combine them under the same square root at least. Um, <clears throat> so be careful, be careful. A really common thing is to kind of take the square root of the, um, the exponent. Don't do that, right? If you have the square root of x to the nine, it's tempting to just take the square root of the exponent and call this x cubed. That's not it, don't do that. Remember, we split off one factor and then we rewrite. So root x to the nine is equal to root x to the eighth times root x, which is equal to the square root of x to the fourth, whoops, the square root of x to the fourth squared times plain old root x. Okay, so don't take the square root of the exponential 
number, right? That's not quite what we're doing here. All right, moving on. So uh, let's do some examples on multiplying and simplifying. Uh, just remember when we multiply two numbers under the same square root, sometimes it changes things to where we can now simplify a little bit further. Uh, so here are some examples of when that happens. So I have root two and root 14. Neither of these alone can simplify, but when I add them together, I end up with root 20, what is it, 28? Yeah, I end up with root 28. So what does that give me? Um, why am I drawing a blank here? Does 28 contain a perfect square? I know it does. Oh, four times seven. <laughs> okay, so 28 is four times seven, right? So I'm gonna rewrite this as root four times root seven, and that allows me to simplify two roots seven. If you're doing this kind of stuff and you're not sure if you're correct or not, here's an easy way to check your work. Um, and this is maybe even a little easier with the, the large number ones, but um, what you can do is multiply. You can, you can work out your original on your calculator and make sure it matches your final answer. Right? And so on my calculator, I can say, um, let's see now. I don't use this calculator very often, so I'll probably do this wrong. How do I clear my memory here? Trash can. Um, okay, so I would say 2 square rooted times um, 7 square rooted. That is equal to 3.741 blah, 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 blah. Now what I need to do Now I need to say uh, 2 times 7 square rooted. No, oh, I didn't get the same answer. Did I do that right? Oh, <laughs> the first one is supposed to be 14 square rooted. Uh, okay. Hmm, why am I getting wrong answers here? Let's see now. 2... Uh, square rooted. <laughs> As you guys can see, I just don't know how to use my calculator. <laughs> so, so we're just going to trash this calculator Oop. and assume that we have this right. <laughs> <clears throat> Which we do, I promise. Um, <laughs> I just don't know how to use my calculator on this surface. So pretend that never happened <laughs> and we'll move onwards. Try this at home, right? Maybe I'm not right. If you, guys, if you guys are getting wrong answers on this, make sure you come in tomorrow and tell me I'm incorrect and, and yell at me about it. Or don't yell at me. Tell me politely. Tell me nicely. So anyway, let's move on. Uh, we multiply five, the root of 5t by the root of 6t. Well, this gives us the root of 30t squared and I can simplify that t squared portion, right? 30 does not contain any perfect squares. Pretty sure, three times 10. Nope, 30 contains no perfect squares. So all I can do is simplify the t squared portion. All right, so um, I can split this up into the root of t squared times the root of 30, and that gives me t times root 30, or t roots 30, if you like to say it that way. All right, next example. n squared times n cubed. Um, we combine them both to give us n to the fifth. And of course, we split this up into the root of n to the fourth times the root of n. And that allows us to simplify the root of n to the fourth. In the end, I should get n squared times root n for this one.
Okay. Let's keep going. So <clears throat> I'm going to keep combining these guys on this one. I combine everything again. Uh, what, what I'm just going to notice though, before I actually combine everything, I'm just going to notice that I have a perfect square right here with nine. Right? It's not going to combine with anything in two to create any new perfect square. So I'm going to maybe simplify that nine on the very first step here. Okay, so I'm just going to write that out front. Root nine, that's definitely simplifiable. That's multiplied by root two. And then I'll combine all of my x terms, right? x to the 8th times x cubed, that gives me x to the 11th. On this next step, I'm going to go ahead and simplify that root 9. That turns into a 3. That is 3 roots 2. Then my x to the 11th splits up into x to the 10th times plain old x. Uh, so on this next step, let's see, you know, I'll, I'll rewrite this x to the 10th term. I'm going to rewrite it up front here. It's going to turn into x to the 5th squared. And then my root 2 and my root x, <clears throat> I can't simplify those terms, so I might as well just combine them under a square root in the end. 2x. Now my final step, I go ahead and I simplify this last square root that I have. I can pull out an x to the 5th. So I have 3x to the 5th times root 2x. So not too bad. All right. So finally, just the last little bit here. Um, why don't you guys go ahead and pause your videos and try and do these ones on your own. Um, I'm going to come through and do them, of course, in a couple of seconds, so you can watch me do them. Uh, but try this out on your own, just to work any maybe kinks out that you might have uh, dealing with this stuff. All right, so go ahead, pause the video, take your time. Here, I'll zoom out so you can see them all at once, maybe. Almost, yeah, they're a little small, but there they are. All right, do all those on your own and see what kind of trouble you run into, what kind of questions you might have. Then come back, and of course, we'll do them all together. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've paused it, and that you have either completed these with flying colors, and you've got everything correct, or you have questions, and you're wondering what happens in a specific circumstance. So let's go over how to do these. So suppose I had, I was asked to simplify the square root of 500. Um, so the first thing I do is I'd say, well, that's just a number. So I need to think about any perfect squares that 500 might contain. Well, I could do a factor tree for this. And as a matter of fact, because, because we're sort of working these out uh, the long way, let's just do a factor tree. A lot of you guys might be saying, oh, there's an obvious uh, perfect square in there, and I can see it right now. But... Not all of us can think through that. So, so let's go ahead and do a factor tree until we, until we get better at thinking through these perfect squares. So I have 500 at the top of my factor tree. I'm just going to go ahead and split that off into two branches. Uh, so let's see now. Um, let's just do 500 divided by 50. Well, that is 10 times 50, right? Yeah, I don't know why I had a brain fart on that one. <laughs> that is just 10 times 50. Okay, so now we're going to split this 10 up into 2 and 5. Well, the 50 splits up into, let's say, 10 and 5. The 2 is prime. The 5 is prime, the 10 splits up into 2 and 5, and the 5 is prime. Now all these numbers are prime, which means I can, I can circle any pairs and continue on. So I see a pair of 2's that I'm circling right here in red, and I also see a pair of 5's 
that I'm circling right here in green. And I have a single five that's left over. So remember, the way that we do this is we multiply, we multiply everything that is circled together. So two times two, that's four. Five times five, that's 25. So the circled things have produced the number 100. What's left is the plain old five. So those are the two factors that I'm gonna split this radical up into in order to simplify here. Okay, 100 times five. So my 500 splits up into root 100 times root five. All right, root 100, we know what that's equal to. The square root of 100 is just equal to 10, and the root 5 hangs out. So I have 10 roots 5. So let's keep going here. I have 40m. I could do a factor tree for 40, but I know that 40 is divisible by 4, and that's uh, 4 is definitely a perfect square. Right? 10 doesn't really contain any other factors that would make a perfect square but hopefully you created your factor tree if you weren't sure. So I split up 40 into root four times root 10, right? And my root M just hangs out. The only thing here I can simplify is my root four, so I just do that. That turns into two, and my 10 and my M are still just hanging out. So two roots, 10 M. So let's keep going here. <clears throat> okay, hopefully you're getting questions answered, you're gaining confidence with this stuff. So here's an example of where I split up numerators and variables. So I have root 20 here times the square root of b to the seventh. Square root of 20 splits up into square root of four times the square root of five, right? Square root of four, that's four is a perfect square. That's why I split it off into that particular factor. And then my b to the seventh, remember how that works, since seven is an odd number, right? I need to rewrite this as the square root of b to the sixth times the square root of plain old b. Okay. Now the four, that turns into a two. Square root of four, excuse me. Square root of five, we can't simplify that. Square root of b to the sixth, that turns into b cubed. And the square root of plain old b, that just hangs out there. Can't simplify it. So now I combine the things that I was able to simplify in the front, two times b cubed. And the things I was not able to simplify, I combine them over in the rear. 5b. Okay. So let's keep going here. Almost done with these. I know the examples got a little bit uglier as we went on down, but I'll show you what happened. So with this next example, when I multiply this together, I get the square root of 15a cubed. Whoa. <laughs> Not a cubed, easy, easy there, ramjet, a squared. And at this one, I can just do this one in my head, right? I know 15 doesn't come, it doesn't uh, contain any perfect squares, but I know that the square root of a squared is just equal to a. So this is just a roots 15. Next. If you do a factor tree on 90, you'll find out that the only perfect square it contains is nine. So, and actually I should not skip my first step. On my first step, I always just sort of break these guys up. So I have the root of 90 times the root of x to the fifth, that's an odd number, times the root of y to the 10th, that's an even numbered exponent. So I'll handle this slightly different than I handle this. So on this first step, my 90 splits up into root nine times root 10. And root nine, I can simplify that. 
my x to the fifth splits up into the square root of x to the fourth times square root of x. And then of course my y to the tenth, that splits up into y to the fifth squared. That's simplifiable, right? Everything here in red I can simplify. So I'm going to simplify it all and write it in the front. Right? This last step, sometimes I do this last step in slightly different order, um, but I'm going to simplify it all and write it in the front. So I have 3, that comes from the root 9, x squared, y to the fifth. All right, and then whatever I could not simplify goes all under the same square root, 10x. <clears throat> there we go, easy peasy. What is my dog chewing on? My dog is chewing on something it should not be chewing on. Okay, so let's keep going here. This one's a little bit different than what we've seen before, but we treat it the same. These are all different variables, so they all get their own radical. So I have the square root of r squared. I know what that one equals. Square root of x cubed. Square root of y to the fourth. Square root of z to the fifth. So the r squared, we already know what that equals, right? This is just equal to r. The x cubed that's going to split up into the square root of x squared times the square root of x. y to the fourth, we just rewrite that as the square root of y squared in parentheses squared. z to the fifth, that's an odd numbered exponent, so we need to split that up into something we can simplify. z to the fourth and whatever we had left, plain old z. So now I rewrite everything that I can simplify. I'm going to rewrite that out front. So my r, my x squared just turns into a plain old x. My square root of y squared squared, that turns into y squared. And then the same thing happens with this z to the fourth, right? We cut the exponent in half because it's even. Now I'm just going to write whatever I had left under my square roots, x, z. There we go. That would be my final answer. So this stuff, it, it's not too bad. You know, there's, there's a few weird things that can happen, but for the most part, um, you just need to know the basic rules, and you can figure out anything that you need to do from there. Uh, so I, I'm sorry for any inconvenience that not being in class today may have caused. Uh, I, I'm, I should be just fine by tomorrow, I hope. Um, so that's it. You guys should have a great day. Okay, bye-bye.